Today I would like to speak about one important topic that is not often discussed. Because you will see a lot of women talking about their standards, yeah, what they want in a man. And if we take the domain of female dominance, yeah, you will also see lots of dominant women who state what they want from a man, yeah, they set the standard, they are not afraid to voice their needs. They say, okay, I want a submissive man to be this or that, yeah, I want him to match some certain criteria, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> Oh, now you know how I sneeze. It's always multiple times. I don't know what to do with this. I can't stop. Anyway, as we say in Russia, yeah, when you say something and then if you sneeze, it means that it's true. So, but what about submissive men? Yeah, because I try to empower submissive men. I try to tell them, you are not some kind of worthless loser. You are actually, well, a truly devoted man is a blessing for a woman. Who wouldn't want to have someone who treats you like a queen? Who wouldn't want a man who is like a selfless knight protector in a shining armor? Yeah, and when I talk to submissive men, especially on my Telegram channel, um, all of a sudden they realize that they are not some kind of mud, they are not dirt under women's feet, you know? Outside the fetish, they are pretty normal and great men. And then they think, hmm, well, actually, my submission is not some kind of pit where I fall by default. Yeah, because it's not an addiction. That's based on choice. And when it's based on choice, you are very careful who you give the submission to. A woman is supposed to be worthy of your submission. And I know that many don't like when I talk about it, yeah, because what? Women are gods, women are goddesses, yeah, we're supposed to worship them just because, because they exist. Okay, fine. But imagine that you refine yourself as a man, yeah, you follow all the guidance that I provide. You are fit, you are successful, you are respectful, you are a gentleman, and you are devoted, then what? You are going to be devoted to any kind of woman, even if she wants just to use you for your money. Having the provider's mindset does not mean that you shouldn't have boundaries. It does not mean that you shouldn't be able to recognize that a woman just wants to use you for your money. And again, money is important. Providing is important. But is it just that? Maybe there is something else to that. Yeah, maybe there are some other qualities that she values. Obviously, we have to pay attention. Or maybe that's a woman who uh, hasn't done her inner work. Maybe that's a woman who has way too many mental health issues. And again, that's every person's responsibility to work with that. You're, you're not supposed to be someone's savior. Even if it would be great, okay, if you can deal with some certain states, but sometimes it's hard if a person lacks self-awareness, such as if something happens, there are women who think that if you are in some kind of dom sub dynamic, it means that she's always right. No, that's, that's really far from truth. And an actual dominant woman, she's always able to recognize when she is not being right. She's always ready to take responsibility if she was wrong. And she's always ready to apologize if she was wrong. I don't understand, maybe that's an age thing, yeah, that younger girls believe that dominance means some kind of entitlement based on what? I just wanted to understand that dom, sub, this is just titles that people pick to play some certain game. Outside of this game, these people are equal. I know that some of you might think, oh, but we came here, we came to your channel to listen to you because of such topics as female supremacy. And I already said it, that I don't really use this term anymore. A reversed problem is when there is a man, let's use this term high quality. Yeah. Okay. Who is not high quality. Okay. Who has addictions who's maybe overweight, he's not that attractive. Yeah. 
he doesn't have much ambition, so he's not like really successful. But he is entitled, he feels entitled to women's attention just because he's submissive, just because, yeah, you're a dom, you're supposed to give me attention for free or like based on what? This entitlement, it comes from both sides, yeah? And I often speak about the standards for submissive men that you have to respect yourself. But at the same time, I see the other side. These are entitled men who never earned the right to be anywhere around a woman and they believe that their submission needs a woman who is worthy of that. No. If you are such a delicious fruit, then you wouldn't be in my comment section requiring female dominance by default just because you claimed yourself as a sub. Lots of you are not worthy of women's attention and it doesn't matter if it's femdom or like just actual life. It's an incel rhetoric. You're no different from them and I guess you're one of them. But let's get back to standards. When you as a man realize that how much worth your submission has, you're not gonna give it to whoever. You would respect yourself. There is a tendency. Yeah, there are men with an addiction problem and they go on Twitter and they find the most cruel looking, the most ruthless, the most unethical dom who would blackmail and drain him. At this point, this unethical dom becomes some sort of a fetish dispenser because this man, well, I think it's a pretty good match, you know? They play some certain game, yeah, women are there just to, well, impose revenge on men and also, and also to get money, and men are there just to satisfy their needs, and that's like the same circle. They are not devoted to these women, they are just led by their addiction. So they satisfy their craving. And if you give this man an actual fulfilling dom sub relationship where you care for him, he's not going to be able to receive it because they get off being shamed, feeling guilty, feeling inferior, feeling insecure and all these things. And when you realize that you are not this type of person, or maybe you were before, but then you did a lot of work on yourself to, to come to the point when you are not anymore, when you are in your healthy masculine, when you feel strong, when you feel empowered in your role, engaging in some certain dynamics where the other person doesn't care about you, it would feel dirty. It would feel like you're stepping into a pile of dog poo. So when you're choosing a dom, you always have to pay attention to who she is, how she acts, what she says. Because if you know your worth, you wouldn't submit to whoever, just someone who claimed themselves as dominant. You would study them beforehand. You would realize that your effort is actually so valuable because when you submit to a woman, the purpose is to make her life better, actually. And that comes from the place of respect and adoration. And then the secondary benefit of this would be the feeling of belonging, the feeling of being owned. King play is secondary. It comes after the connection. And if your fetishes are kind of similar, then obviously it's going to be fun. But why I'm saying that the connection is primary, because you will be attuned with her needs. Yeah, because in, well, an actual femdom scenario, yeah, not a play pretend, is when you do what she wants. When you get wired to bring her pleasure through the ways she can receive it. So with an actual dom, it's about her fetishes, not yours. I'm not saying that your fetishes are not important, but that's the core meaning of the authentic submission, that you derive pleasure from her pleasure. But if you completely feel like your needs are not satisfied, if you feel constantly frustrated, and if you voice it, yeah, and 
she doesn't want to listen, then maybe it's not the right match for you. One more important thing to mention is that when you have high standards, you are not in the position to fall into some sort of victim mentality. Because if you feel that there is something wrong and a woman is just using you, you don't act like a victim. You don't whine like, oh no, she's using me. You own the situation and you own your choice. You chose to act in a certain way. Surprise, but people use each other. People connect with each other to satisfy each other's needs. That's the purpose of any kind of relationship. The satisfaction of needs. To cover each other's needs. Okay? So you can call it that someone uses you. We all use each other. So the way some of you submissive men complain that women used you, also women, dominant women, can say that some of the submissive men used them. Because lots of these women, they became just fetish dispensers for men who didn't want to give anything. They just wanted women to perform an act of dominance upon them, who just wanted to satisfy themselves while using the images, the fantasies of reverse patriarchy. And since it's a genuine connection, it means that a woman is not supposed to receive anything. Yes, she's supposed to enjoy dominating a man by default. But excuse me, sir, who are you? I would enjoy dominating a man who already proved his worth. It's the same like an intercourse. Well, you might say that, right, intercourse or kink play, it should be based on mutual desire and I agree with that. But that's the thing that for lots of women, if not for all, the desire is born through seeing men's effort to satisfy her if she's healthy, you know, obviously. Lots of people have traumas, yeah, and would be attracted to someone who doesn't do anything for them. But lots of women who are in touch with the feminine within themselves, lots of women with self-respect, they would be in the egg cell position, just observing, just observing who's the best candidate. Before I even move a finger, I want to see man's effort. But as a man, you have to make an effort for someone who you see as great, for someone who inspires your submission and devotion, not because you are an addict. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I will also attach the link to the private Telegram channel and to my social media. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.